Hey everybody, Joe here with 360 Comics. Welcome back for part two of two of my ZoloCon comic haul. If you missed the first video, definitely go back and check it out, but it really doesn't matter what order you watch them in, so you can finish this one first and then go back. In this video, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the lower value, more budget books that I uh, acquired during this convention. And uh, some great, great deals in here. Things that definitely should not have been in dollar bins and three dollar bins. And uh, if you like the video, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and let me know some books that you may have picked up at a convention recently. And make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. We're going to kick things off with an iconic Wolverine cover done by none other than the legendary John Byrne. This thing looks amazing. All red background. First of all, not a single color break on this book. Wolverine pouncing right at you. Uh, I think this thing is going to clean up to a 9.8 really, really nicely. Might come back a 9.6, but either way, I'm going to be happy because I bought this book for $3. The dealer that had this in the next two books um, probably was more of a toy dealer. He had a couple boxes of comics for $3 a piece. And this was in there. Definitely should not have been marked at that price. Uh, but I was lucky enough to find it and pick it up on Sunday of the convention. Not even the first day. Um, so I got lucky here to get this John Byrne masterpiece in such great condition. In the same $3 box, I found this incredible, iconic Wolverine cover done by one of my favorite artists ever, Jim Lee. I love the, the skyline in the background with all the different colors and a shadowy Wolverine in the foreground. And once again, for $3, this book was a great buy. Not in as good condition as the first one. There are a few spine ticks, but this one I could see coming out at a 9.0. I'll probably keep it raw, though and uh, you know, search for a better copy to get graded. The last Wolverine book that was in that $3 box was this reprint of number 10. Now, I didn't at first realize that it was the reprint. I kind of just was so stoked to find it, as well as the other two, that I just put it in a pile and purchased the books. Um, but later on, I realized that not for resale sign on the front, meaning that it was a reprint from what the internet tells me, I think it was from the 2000s, um, so you know, a, a decade and a half or so after this book actually came out, kind of a promotional thing for comic stores, but I actually looked on eBay, and they seem to be going for almost the same price that the original 19, what, 88, 89 printing um, was going for, so I'm definitely happy to pick this thing up for $3. No, your eyes do not deceive you. I purchased my first ever Superman book. If you know me, uh, if you've you know talked on my Instagram live before, you would know that I'm not a fan of Superman. I can't get into him as a character or many of his villains either. But this book was staring at me all weekend, and it's got a bend to it. Um, and it was marked pretty low. Um, it was marked at ten dollars, and on Sunday. I talked to the guy, I ended up getting it for about $7, and I was really happy with that um, because I'm pretty sure that all the defects on this book are pressable. So I'm definitely going to press this book, try to get it graded, a 9.8 you know, brings in over $100. This is a book that I would definitely um, was definitely buying to sell not to keep for my own personal collection because I'm not a big Superman fan. But I just saw some value in it, and I just bought my own press. So I'm going to try out my skills here to clean this thing up, press it, and maybe get a 9.8. Either way, I'm going to be selling it off once I get it back from CGC. The next 13 books were all acquired from the same dealer who had a slew of dollar bins out. And there were some real gems in there, including this New Mutants 87, first appearance of Cable, second print. Now you can tell this is the second print because it has a gold background. The first print has a kind of red-orange background, um, and that's a lot more expensive. But this second print still is worth about... 10 12 maybe even $15 in a higher grade, and I picked it out of a dollar box. Um, the dealer also had a deal where if you bought 10 books from the dollar boxes, you got three for free, and, you know, 
I got 13 books basically for the price of this one book. Um, you know, essentially bought this one and got 12 more for free. Definitely really happy about that. Let's check out the other 12. Here we've got an X Force number one. Still in the poly bag, in great condition, uh, poly bagged up with that Deadpool trading card that comes inside. Um, I'll probably take this out of the poly bag eventually and maybe get it graded. It is in nice condition, though. I was able to kind of move the poly bag around enough to kind of see that things were looking good. You got to be careful because poly bags can actually damage the comics. A lot of people think that if a book is poly bagged, um, it's going to be in near mint, mint condition. But that is not the case in a lot of situations. And you'll see that a lot with... Uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, people thinking that the polybagged ones are going to be perfect, and they open it up and it's an 8.0 or an 8.5. Uh, watch out for that. Our third dollar bin book is the same as the second one, but this has the gold background telling us that it is a second print. Still in really nice condition, definitely possibly gradable um, if I ever want to go about doing that. Here's another book you don't find in dollar bins very often. We've got X-Force number two, the second appearance of Deadpool. This book has kind of crept up in value due to the popularity of the Deadpool movies over the last uh, five or so years. And, uh, you know, usually I see them for eight, ten, twelve dollars, depending on condition. Uh, but I was able to pull this guy out of a dollar bin and I'm very happy about that. To go along with that second appearance of Deadpool, why not get his third appearance here in X-Force number four? Really nice condition on this, so I had to pick it up. Up next, we got another book that's gotten a lot of love since the Deadpool movies came out. We've got uh, X-Force number eight, the first appearance of Domino. Uh, she does a kind of appear in a New Mutants book, um, but it's not actually her. It's copycat pretending to be her and in this issue she does have her first appearance it's more of a cameo uh, but she is on the cover of this one so it does get first appearance recognition um, and then number 11 is actually her more expensive appearance that's her second appearance kind of like first full appearance I don't, don't want to argue it but that book is more expensive probably due to the much better cover where she's prominently displayed fighting Deadpool. Um, another thing to note, this is a newsstand edition. Uh, in the early 90s, there were not a lot of newsstands, and it's hard to find them in a good condition. Ticking it up a few to X-Force number 10, we've got the first appearance of the Externals. Not a super big key or anything like that, but in good condition, so I definitely had to pick it up for a dollar. Another dollar bin surprise here. We've got X-Force number 15, where both the cover and the inside story feature an awesome fight between Cable and Deadpool. Definitely got a lot of hype when uh, Cable appeared in Deadpool 2. And just an awesome cover to go along with a great story. Here's the last X-Force book in this little dollar bin bundle. We've got number 19, which features the first appearance of Copycat as herself in her true form. I mentioned before that she is uh, disguised as Domino at one point. This is where she reveals her true self. You may remember this book from another dollar bin video I did just a couple weeks ago, and I was so stoked to find another copy in a dollar bin in pretty great shape. It's got two little spine ticks, whereas the one that I found before had one bigger spine tick. Um, probably overall, this one is in better condition than the first one, uh, so I'll take a look at them and decide which one I want to keep, and I'll probably get rid of the other. If you watched my affordable Batman key issue video that I released last week, uh, you'll remember that I mentioned a couple of Damian Wayne books, his first full appearance in Batman 656, and his second full appearance and first cover appearance in 657. Well, this is the very next book, number 658, featuring his second cover appearance as well as his third full appearance. Definitely a great book, and they go really nicely together having all four of those books. And I actually didn't have a copy of this one. Um, I had one years ago, and I ended up selling a lot of my Damian Wayne stuff. Um, but I, I, I ended up picking this one back up for $1, and I'm very happy about that. 
Oh, look at that. Another book that I mentioned in that budget Batman video from last week. We've got Batman 700, the appearance of multiple characters uh, under the mantle of Batman. We have Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, and Damian Wayne, as well as Terry McGinnis being mentored by Damian Wayne instead of Bruce. Um, we've got a really cool Batman art gallery in the background, as well as a diagram and layout of the Batcave. Last up in these 13 books that I got for $10, we've got Batman Nevermore, number one of five. This is a cool little tie-in miniseries that, uh, you know, kind of combines the Cape Crusader with uh, my guy Edgar Allan Poe down here. And I used to have all five of these. I ended up selling them off at one point, so I was very happy to find this because you really don't see this book very often. Um, you can get the whole set on eBay for for like around $20, $25. Um, but I was definitely stoked to see at least one copy um, of issue one in this dollar bin. I'll definitely be on the hunt for numbers two through five now that I have this one again. Finally, last but not least, we've got one of the silliest purchases of the whole weekend. We've got about 100 issues of the X-Factor series, mostly ranging from around book number 50 all the way up to the end of the series in the 140s. Um, I have most of the early books from 1 to about 45 and this was just to kind of help complete the run. This dealer had a 50 cent bin and the books were all buy one get one free. So each one of these books cost 25 cents on average. Definitely a really cheap way to go about purchasing this whole run of X Factor stuff. Um, there are tons and tons of minor keys, including some minor first appearances of characters in here. Um, nothing super high value, but I did find two nicer books. Um, we've got uh, X Factor number 71, and uh, we got this barcode here, meaning it is a newsstand edition, which was pretty rare to find in the 90s. By then, most things had been turned over to comic book stores. Um, so this first appearance of the new team here in a newsstand, as well as X Factor number 92 with this uh, hologram, very 90s cover. This is the first appearance of Exodus, and this book goes for about $8 in nice condition, um, like it is. And uh, I was definitely very happy to pick it up for 25 cents. I think this is a really good investment here because I can get a lot of bang for my buck at 25 cents a book. And I have a ton of reading material here. And whenever I do finish it and want to get rid of it, um, I'll be able to sell it off in a large group and recoup, you know, most of my money, if not all of it. These two books right here, Wolverine 17 and New Mutants 87 second print, are definitely my two favorite books of this whole group right here. I'm going to get them cleaned up, pressed, and send them off to CGC, get them graded because I think they'll look great slabbed up in my personal collection. Uh, let me know in the comments below how I did with this haul, and uh, tell me some dollar books and three dollar books and convention books that you've picked up recently. Uh, share those stories with me, and head on over to Instagram, follow me there, and definitely, definitely, definitely hit that subscribe button so you know when my next giveaway is happening. It's happening soon. I'll be announcing it probably within the week, so stay tuned for that, and don't forget, Turn the page, wash your hands.